Hi everyone, so it is March 31st, and for those of you who don't know, what I like to do is, um, when I get a request from you guys, I just write it down and cross them off when I get to them. Um, I do this based off of when I feel like I'm supposed to be doing a reading on this particular person. If I get basically higher advice of not to do someone at all, then I won't do it. Um, so just be aware of that. I do see your requests and I do write them down, but if I don't get confirmation to do so, then I'm not going to follow it. So today, as you can tell by the title, I am doing Namjoon of BTS. I hope I'm pronouncing that close enough that you know who I'm talking about. You, you know who I'm talking about because you read it already. <laughs> so I'm going to cross him off. Now, here's the thing. Someone had requested Jin from BTS and they mentioned that this person is in the military. And when I was looking at, I'm going to call him June from now on, little June bug. Um, when I'm looking at June, I keep being pulled to Jin. There's a connection there because here's the thing is, and I'm, I'm like moving stuff around as you can see, there's just, it's so distracting. Like everything around me is starting to really, really distract me. And I feel like that's what's going on with you, June. So I'm switching it now. So read the description below if you don't know what I'm doing here. Um, but now I'm gonna switch it as if I was speaking to June. I might start talking to you guys. I'll go back and forth with this. So there's a distracting energy. It feels like my mind can't quite focus on what's ahead like what I want for myself or the direction I want to go or even how it's possible if it's at all possible and there's this feeling that I get of no one understands it's not coming from a place where you feel as if it's like you know, so, like sometimes people are like, oh, no one understands me. It's like, no, just like open up. Um, I'm sure there's someone out there that understands. It's like, no, most people really do not understand. And it's not coming from a place of, I don't I don't know what to do, how to describe it, but it's like almost, almost like victimhood or that's not really the word, but it's just kind of feeling alone. Um and frustrated I don't know it's like I guess like when people say that it's coming from a place of frustration um and like hopelessness I don't know I, um because ba basically what I see is the difference with you is that you feel very level-headed about it and realistic about it and also like there's really very little I could say that someone could relate to what I'm talking about because it's so obscure that even if I said it, it would almost come off as if I was being ungrateful or kind of childish or like just that I don't understand what's going on, or I'm taking things too personally, or I'm not grateful. It's like all of these things that it could kind of seem like if people didn't have empathy. So there's, there's a deep seated fear with that. Very, very, very deep seated um, to the point that I don't think you would fully recognize that. But the, the reality is, is that irregardless of whether you're f afraid of not being understood <laughs> is that reality that you perceive is real. That it seems as if you, you have very limited options here in something that's happening drastically in your life. Um, it feels like over the course of your life, especially now, but 
over the course of your life, it's, it's felt militaristic. It's felt manufactured. It's felt, uh, honestly, it feels very dangerous. It feels dangerous to the point that like, your life could be in danger if you were to step out of your role or if you would step out of your some sort of position that you're in then you f you know you feel and you know and this is something that's not talked about often or it's not it's almost like it is talked about but um if you, we talk about in realms of celebrity or just people in your circle it feels more celebrity though is that they would be talking about the Um, you know, like the positive attention that you receive. They wouldn't be talking about this undercurrent of something very dangerous that's happening in your life. A manufactured danger, a manufactured reality that's very dangerous for you. I just dropped a card and it it's, oh my goodness. Okay, hold on. <laughs> so it's nature and he's he's resisting he's resisting he's holding on to this lightning bolt and there's this, this feeling i see where you're trying to look at your you're trying to look at your option options or you're trying to look at what can be done because there's this feeling of like i have hope or i have a belief that there has to be something that can be done in here like in this situation, because I want to open up or I want to breathe. I want to have something that's more authentic, more of my nature, my true nature, who I am and like how I want to live. Like I want to be, honestly, it feels like Americanized, like the American dream. I don't think you want to be American. <laughs> Um, maybe that would be nice in some ways, but I think you would rather be in your culture, but have the more Western freedoms because there's, there's some sort of, it's beyond cultural differences. It's something beyond that, something very obscure. That's the word I'm getting. It's very obscure and specific and they're really drawing me to cool. Why? Oh, I understand that. Why? Why? So this is this is interesting. Um, okay. Is this feeling of this life? Okay, let me show you what I got. Monk, nun, food and hunger. And this is directly to do with your past life, a significant past life that's wanting to be brought up here. And what I'm seeing is they're showing me, they, they showed me this before I pulled the cards, which was some sort of religious figure. And this is where I feel that you resided. You were some deeply spiritual person who is willing to sacrifice yourself for the betterment of others. And it's getting played out in this life. This is part of your pre-birth promise from a past life in which you were some sort of deeply religious figure who wanted to basically, it's the way that I'm seeing is like fasting, right? So this food or hunger is this is like a fasting life 
where this is you dedicating yourself even deeper to spirituality, to God, is saying, well, I'm, it's some sort of imprisonment. Like you feel imprisoned. You feel like you are sacrificing your life. It feels like a, you're sacrificing your life because again, you're being a, like you're being a product, you're being used, you're doing, you're like, you see what I'm saying? Like you're essentially, you are being used um, and your inter like your soul feels trapped almost. It doesn't feel, how do I, I, I know I'm getting my point across, but I just want to be super, super clear or like even more clear where your spirit is bursting and bursting and bursting. It's so much stronger than your physical reality. It's like yearning and, and wanting to express itself. And yet it has this thin reality, this thin, thin barrier, this thin, like a, like a jail cell of how you are allowed to express yourself and who you're supposed to be. And what I'm seeing is like this person, this is how I feel of you now. And it's like, I just keep feeling my third eye. Like I keep feeling this, I'm feeling this. And sometimes I personally do this, like when I'm trying to get information, like I can feel this getting like heavy or like move, like there's like movement inside here. Like that's how it feels. And so I just like try and just like tap it and like kind of like meditate and like focus, focus. And that's what I'm feeling is like focus and focus because you look like you're in this military vest, right? And this is lit up. This is lit up. And this is kind of like, it's like a jewel. It's like a, a jewel, but it's like an eyeball, like, like shaped like that. Like a jewel, like, well, uh, small, like this, like that. And it's like, um, it's like Sailor Moon, you know, and they have the little thingies that has a little jewel here. That's what it's like that. Um, and they're showing me how there's so, so many people that are telling you like what to do and then also taking from you and it's like very it's almost it's so overwhelming that you can't really activate this because it's there's so much going on there's so much going on and it feels like it's interfering with this but then you you have this feeling to turn around it's like, it's like, here's a jail, jail cell, right? And then there's a window, like a window. And it feels like, like this is representative of your crown chakra. There's a window and the window is showing you nature, mother nature. Um, and that's where you want to be. It's like everyone's talking, 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 moving around, handing you things. You're taking it. Da, 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 da. You're like, I just really want to turn around so bad. I just want to look in the sky. I just want to turn around, and just look at it, and just let my soul soar. There's, and it showed me this picture. You have to look online. A lot of you will know what this picture is, but it's this little boy and. I can't remember exactly what it is, but it, he's in like this jail. He's like in a cave or whatever. And there's the um, light up there. And I think there's like a bird in a cage that's released and like goes up. Um, they show me that. Um, but so they're showing me this, right? And they're saying how sourdough, like when you make sourdough, as long as you feed it, that can last hundreds and hundreds. Of, it can last forever, basically. And how that's essentially what this life is for you is the sourdough. They're saying like you're passing on 
Like you pass from your past life, the significant past life, in order to incarnate into this life, in order to feed people. You're like feeding people. Um, like you're feeding you're feeding people and I would I would put this I would put this like you're not giving them your energy you're not people aren't feeding off your energy necessarily um I mean this in a good way like you're feeding them in a good way so it would be like fans who sincerely had their lives change it's like people who who are going through anything really and you're just you're either an escape for them or you're you're like a motivator for them you're a healer you're a healer because they just showed me uh, a sow thistle a sow thistle and that is this plant that has a lot of medicinal qualities to it and it grows they just he and what else and what else and what else that's what they're saying i believe it grows in like i mean it grows everywhere it can grow anywhere um it, it can actually be seen as invasive because it can t overtake crops, um, at least here in, here in, here in North America. And I think they're beautiful. I let them grow. <laughs> and, um, and they, they, you can, you can eat them. Um, they come from like the Aster family. Look up so thistle, S O W thistle. Um, there has to be there there's some meaning there. There's a spiritual significance to the so thistle beyond just what I'm saying that relates to you. And I I I believe I believe it's like like up to like 25,000 seed heads. Like it can it can create so many sow thistles from this one plant and or even like one flower maybe. And I feel like cuz I know now you have you're considered your fans are considered an army. <laughs> and I I believe that this is really uh, representative of an army of people who feel empowered, who feel empowered by you. Um, it's like you have seeded something beautiful in your fans. And the um, people close to you, so this could especially be your bandmates. They are surprised by you. There's something about you that's very surprising to them, very impressive to them, something unexpected about your personality. So overall i mean this looks like a monk to me doesn't it don't they wear orange buddhist monk we have divine timing we have you are not alone and this is the biggest thing that i feel is i think never mind the details never mind the details of your experience you are not alone in this because there's so much that people can relate to with what you're experiencing. Um, like no one person and the way that they interpret the world is the same. 
you know, and your experiences alone are not the same as another person. Like you can get close, but it's not the same. And so kind of understanding that or like thinking more on that, because I think you do understand that, but just kind of really sitting with that, then that would kind of help you feel more close to people um, because it's not necessarily about them. Like it's not about someone relating to you. It's not about someone understanding you. It's really about the effort that someone puts towards understanding you or like just caring about you. Like maybe they just can't ever relate or understand and that's okay too as long as they like love you, right? And they can only love you as much as what they're capable of. And so it's kind of just, I guess ultimately it resides with yourself, like how you feel, how how comfortable you feel in in knowing all of this um and like how you kind of experience the world and everything but also I, i'm drawn to the light she's holding and again that repetition of you being a light in people and so they're also reminding reminding you that you know just because you were in a past life some sort of religious figure doesn't mean that that doesn't carry on in this life as well. Like that spirit, that experience is still a part of your soul. That's still a part of the way that you kind of present yourself, whether you're fully aware of that at all times or not, like that's still ingrained in you, like your spiritual DNA. That's not something that you can really avoid or run from. Not that you are, but just kind of bringing that up. So we have pray, release, relax, and share your wisdom. It feels like a book. She's even holding a book here. So if you were thinking about writing a book, even if it was under... Uh, is it a su su uh, sur pseudonym? Is that what it is? Like a fake name? Um, no, you're not supposed to do that. It would have to be under your name. Or even just like try to... I heard try to reach out whatever that's supposed to mean, try to reach out. I just noticed the wings. I've been noticing the wings on these. I never noticed, I guess this is, is this, what is this? This is an angel deck. I never noticed until now they all have wings. It never stood out to me as much as it does now. Um, but, and, but your wings hurt. I think this is very heavy for you. I think this life is very heavy for you. This experience is very heavy for you, but it's part of your spiritual pilgrimage. You know, people who, who, who are the most resilient means that they had to come up against opposition. Otherwise you're not resilient. In order to become the strongest, you have to have had resistance, right? So there's something you see, you're feeling alone. Because, because you want, you want to express yourself authentically, 
Like you're yearning for that. There's a part of you that wants to express itself in all of its authenticity. And it feels like you're being stifled. And it feels like you feel like your fans deserve that. Like they deserve to see you authentically. Like you want this for people. You want people to... Like this is actually, there's a really strong, the more I tap into it, the more intense it gets. So I'm getting trust, okay? I'm getting take the lead, take the lead, joy and stability, okay? So what I'm seeing here is that when you do, it's, I think this, this is happening naturally. This is happening with divine timing. This is happening with divine timing. So what's going to happen here is what I'm seeing is what's, What's happening is you are going to, you're, you're not going to turn around. You know, I talked about the story and you, there's a window behind you. You just want to look at this guy. You're not going to turn around. You're going to go through these, these people, all their hands are out, handing you all kinds of different things, taking things, you know, moving, moving, moving. It's like a, an advisory board, right? You're like, you know what? great perfect here you go here you go like i'm i'm gonna do all those things i'm gonna do what you want but at the same time i'm gonna do what i feel is right for me and there's gonna be a window of opportunity for this i think i think realistically speaking there is not an opportunity for this at the moment and you know from an outsider's perspective or i would say like even from your perspective um, if you were not to, tr to trust in div divinity, if you weren't to trust in your higher beings and angels and everything and all of what I was talking about past lives and all that, you wouldn't see this opportunity coming. You like you wouldn't have that faith. You wouldn't have that trust. Irregardless, it's going to happen anyway. So it's how you want to kind of see the it unfold. Do you want to actually like be in the moment or do you want to just kind of whatever? But the point is, is you're going to move into an opportunity to actually have the liberties, the freedoms to express yourself authentically, honestly, truthfully, and be stable in your energy. And you're, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. It feels like a book, like it, or like an audio or like a documentary or like a, or, or, you know, it's like, that's what I'm saying is like talking, but, but serious. Talking, but serious. Um, there's something here that's going to happen for you. This actually feels years in the making. This doesn't feel f too sudden. I could be wrong about the timing. Um, but it, this feels like this is going to take an extensive period of time. This is like a big bulk of like your life purpose, part of your purpose here. Um, um so basically you're going to go through these people and you're going to like exit the whole building. Like you don't have to just look up and see the sky. You're going to go outside. You're going to actually be out there doing exactly what it is that you want to do not just kind of get what you can get by looking out the window like you're going to literally be there you don't have to make sacrifices you don't have to um compensate you know for whatever with someone Seven seventy two seven 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 two seven sevens and twos are important here. Okay. And this is facilitated by you. But I think it's going to have some sort of um after effects like other people are going to follow your lead in some way this is supposed to happen this is destined to happen 
Okay. See. Leaving or travel. Yeah. So that's what I see for you. And I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.